Today on What It's Like, 1965 Marlin. This car fits in the cool, quirky, definitely unusual categories. And to be completely honest, I always like these. But before we get into the review, here's a brief history lesson on the Marlin. At the 1964 Auto Show, AMC turned up with this awesome, radical for the time, fastback styled show car called the Rambler Tarpon. And it was designed by Dick Teague. Okay, let's talk for a minute about Dick Teague. What you have to understand is back in the day, every car manufacturer had their own designers. For example, GM, it was Bill Mitchell. For Chrysler until 1962, it was Virgil Exner. Dick Teague was a designer at AMC, but he also worked for GM, Packard, and Chrysler during his lifetime. Here's a partial list of the cars that he is remembered for. Just look at those lines. How the rear swoops back, it looks very 66 Charger-like. It's almost like somebody from Dodge saw this design and decided to copy it. Not just Dodge, though. I see some Ford Torino in there, like 1969 Torino in the fastback look, kind of where the rear quarter window would be. There's these little gills just like the Torino would have. Well, anyway, Tarpon was built on a convertible Rambler American chassis. It's also important to note, American Motors didn't show this car off often, if that makes any sense. But every time they did show it off, they had such a huge fanfare that it was green-lighted for production. In 1965, first year for production, they changed the name from Tarpon, which also is a tropical fish, to Marlin, which is also a fish. For reasons I can't explain, why would you name a car after a fish? American Motors, or AMC for short, built the Marlin only for a three-year production run. 65, 66, and 67. And the funny thing is, Marlin was rebranded each year it was produced. 1965, it was the Rambler Marlin. 1966, just the Marlin. 1967, AMC Marlin. Also worth mentioning, 65 and 66, Rambler Marlin and Marlin was practically the same car. They went to a totally different body style in 1967 because a lot of people complained that the proportions didn't look right. Like it had this really long back end and this really short nose, but it was too late. They canceled the Marlin after the 1967 production year. But yeah, getting back to this 1965 Rambler Marlin, just look at those lines. It's such a shame this car only got a three-year run. In my opinion, it could be the name to blame. I mean, who wants to drive a car named after a fish? It would make sense if it was a boat, but a car? All right, walking up and getting inside the Marlin. Notice this door handle, it just has a push button. You got a key lock on the driver's side for once. Most of the cars that we've been doing on this channel could only be locked on the passenger side, whereas on this one, you could lock it on the driver's side so you just push the button to open the door check those door panels out look at how nice they look look at all the bright work nice armrest this is the door handle to get out this window crank crank down this big window so it's got this nice chrome trim on top of the window that's what it looks like with the one window down, but both windows go down to give it a kind of a hard top convertible kind of look and feel. We'll get to that in a minute. Got vent windows. So those are cool. That's your 60 mile an hour air conditioning. But let's show you this one now, this window. When you crank it down, see how that goes? It kind of pivots down inside there. Gives you a nice big open area. Just check out this interior. Look how nice this is. All right, so let's walk you through this dashboard. Up here, you have your windshield wipers. Over here, you have your lights. Pull them out. Over here, you have your blower, and you could blow it 
uh, low or high. Down here you have the weather eye, just like in the 50s. You have your temperature setting here, your air and defrost. Over here in this first pod, you have your speedometer, your odometer, and down here you have the left turn signal indicator. In the center here, you have a brake light. Over here, you have some idiot lights, as well as your temperature and fuel gauge. The right turn signal indicator is in there, as well as you have your alternator and your oil, and they just show as like idiot lights. You have a fastened seatbelt indicator here. Very nice turned aluminum look in the dash we're going to go down here real quick there is your emergency this is your emergency brake and this is the emergency brake release this is a three three speed on the tree or three on the column three on the tree sounds better so you got your clutch pedal brake pedal and your gas pedal they put an aftermarket switch in the bottom here but normally your key switch would be right there and it tells you the different settings that you could put it on right here you have your map lights or dome lights Let's turn them on real quick there's a light back here in the back in the center right here you have your right here you have your cigarette lighter here's the controls to the radio you have a rear speaker control here. This is the tone and it turns it on. And this is your, this is your tuner. See how that's moving. And this back one controls the rear speaker. You have a clock over here. Underneath the clock, you have an ashtray for the passenger. You have an ashtray for the driver. Here you can, I'm, I'm assuming you can set your pre-selections for your radio station you have a marlin badge there coming back to the steering wheel like we said this is a three speed on the tree so you shift it with this you got your turn signals here and it's got a nice sounding horn and of course you have an ashtray back here for the passengers and the rear seat has an armrest which is a nice touch because some cars don't you got a rear view mirror mounted at the top you got these nice sun visors headliner is real nice there is no dome light you got a nice coat hook in the back you got a light in the back seat here there's a really big shelf in the back if you wanted to get anything sun baked you could put it back there underneath that big window come back up here you got a nice big glove box so check out these seat belts they're really cool they're mounted in the floor and this is the connecting part here they're like old school they're almost like um airplane seat belts that's what the airplanes use now but those were what seat belts were in the 60s all right, so you get in the back seat, you just push this forward. And you just sit down in here, pull the seat back. In the seat where it's in the position right now, there's lots of space, but if they moved back, I'm sure that the space would get pretty tight. It's pretty tight sitting in the front, I will say. Even with the seat all the way in the back, all the way pushed back, it's still, very cozy in the front seat. So check this out. All the seats fold down into a bed. Just like the Hudson Cross Country Brambor wagon we did. It's also worth noting that it doesn't go completely flat. But you can put a pillow here. Just like this. Now it's flat. And you can sleep in this car very comfortably. They made them so, you know, if you're taking a long trip or something and you got tired, you can pull off the side of the road and sleep it off and just keep going the next day. Here we're at the back of the car. This is all we get for a truck. It's not a hatchback. This little panel right here, that's all you get. 
coming in here. Hey, look how small that trunk is. It's absolutely insane. But it goes back. That's a full size spare. It goes all the way back inside of there. So, I mean, you got a lot of trunk storage space. The opening is just really small. Also, cool to point out that you could see kind of light coming through it with that emblem that they have on the back, which I'll show you after we shut it. That's the that's the emblem. Sunlight comes through there. I love the fins inside the brake light housings. It looks they look awesome. Got little fins at the back here. Nothing too extreme, but th this fin runs the whole length of the car. Like in between here something I never noticed before okay getting underneath the hood on this one it's a little bit of a trick uh, you have to put your fingers through here there's a little bar that comes down and it, you have to do it all in one motion so you grab this with you like your middle finger so the latch on this one I don't know if you can see it there's a metal bar that comes down through you have to put your fingers through here and you just kind of feel it can you see that thing moving around that is the latch and you have to do this all one motion you pop it pop it up and pull, pull it up it's tricky why do we show that because they all open different okay let's talk about engines we're just going to cover the engines that were offered in 1965 and 1966 base engine was a 230 two cubic inch displacement, inline six cylinder, two barrel carburetor setup producing 155 horsepower. You could step it up and get the 287 V8 producing 189 horsepower, which this car has. You could get the 327, 250 horsepower version, two barrel carburetor setup, or you could step up and get the 327 with 270 horsepower, four barrel carburetor setup. What's even more interesting is the transmission options offered for 1965 and 1966. You could get the three-speed manual. You could get the three-speed manual with overdrive. In 1965, you could get the twin stick in console. You could get the four-speed stick in 1966. Three-speed auto, three-speed shift command on console. Well, that completes our tour for today of the... Uh, Rambler Marlin 1965. I was kind of disappointed in this one because I, I really wanted to drive it. A lot of these cars I find for sale and I asked the owner if I could, you know, do a review of the car or whatever. And this one, um, I had high hopes that I would be able to drive it down the road. And when I got there, all the tires were flat. It looked like it was sitting there forever. And, you know, advertisement said that it ran and drove well, but we had a really hard time getting it started and it runs off of a can of gas and not the gas tank. So you couldn't drive it down the road because gas can was in the way of it actually running. And it was just disappointing because it wasn't, it, it wasn't what it was advertised to be still a great car, you know, and it's like one of those things like, you know, don't meet your heroes kind of thing. And that's the kind of vibe that I got from this. It was still a great car to look at and to go over and stuff but I really wanted to drive it down the road and get a feel for what the car was and I, I didn't get a chance to do that but but yeah I hope this information was good to somebody it I definitely learned that the uh, seats fold down into a bed I didn't know that they did that in the 60s I thought they stopped that in the 50s when uh, Nash and Hudson kind of like you know d dissolved into AMC or whatever but yeah um I'll catch you guys later toodaloo